you know, being the only melodic instrument in a three-piece band, uh, actually before that, it was just basically uh, Alex and I. So we both just filled every hole possible. If there was a hole, we filled it, you know, and, and it, it's... But the, the, the main reason why I squeeze so many, um, you know, you call them tricks, call them whatever, techniques out of a guitar, was out of necessity because I couldn't afford the pedals. You know, I couldn't afford a Walla pedal, I couldn't afford a, a fuzz box and all, all the toys that everybody else had. So I did everything I could to get the sounds out of, out of the guitar with my fingers. Kind of necessity leads to innovation. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah. Who were some of your musical heroes? Uh, well, my father, to begin with. Um, you know, we were surrounded by music from day one. Uh, and he, he, he lived long enough to see our, our success. Um, as a guitarist, uh, Eric Clapton was, was my hero because he was a, a straight ahead guy, just plugged his guitar straight into an amp. And, uh, you know, it was, it was very uh, organic, so to speak. There wasn't a lot of BS in between. Um, so, yeah, I, I liked him uh, during Cream. Uh, after Cream, I kind of lost interest uh, in, in him and, uh, and basically stopped listening to music altogether. I didn't listen to much of any uh, after that. Why is that? I, uh, I was so busy and wrapped up in my own little world that I just didn't need, uh, you can ask Alice, you know, I never, or, or my son, you know, what's the last record I bought? Peter Gabriel so <laughs> and the record and the record before that I don't have a clue you know I'm, I'm just not one I don't I don't it's probably to the radio. an eight track huh it was probably an eight track a cassette but yeah I, I never listened to the radio in my car so I like to hear the, the engine of the car <laughs> this is a man who you know enjoys sounds right yeah, yeah. And that's probably what Actually, kind of... one of my cars is you know, on, on the recording, too, on the, the breakdown in Panama, where it goes, oh, I'm a little hot tonight. Mm. It's one of my cars. <laughs> uh, a 1972 Mura S Lamborghini. Which I still have today. Now you talk about uh, Clapton being an early influence of yours, but I think uh, you also were listening to Jimi Hendrix. Uh, not so much, actually. No? No. Jimmy um, Page? You Any know, of those guys? It's like, unless, uh, unless, uh, no, not really. So, uh, unless there were songs that, that Alex or our bass player at the time, Mark Stone, would come in with an album and say, hey, you want to learn this song by this band? Uh, I, I wouldn't, I usually wasn't the one to pick the songs we played. It's interesting because all of those iconic guitarists, they all played off the rack guitars. You, you're, you're the only one who said, mm -mm, that's not good enough for me. Um, well, obviously it was good enough for them, but it wasn't for me, you know? Uh, doesn't mean anything except that, really. Well, the, the sounds that you were making and uh, with Van Halen really kind of changing the musical landscape, it really kind of inspired a whole era of copycats. Yeah, which at first, you know, I kind of went, you know, it, at first it kind of pissed me off. <laughs> then I started thinking, oh God, what did I start? <laughs> you know, but then, you know, my brother, my brother and my, my father both told me, hey, you know, uh, uh, Imitation is the biggest form of flattery, so I just let it go at that, you know. Because with me, it was just the way I played, you know. It wasn't like I was copying anyone. But I think at that time, people, you know, all the record labels were looking for their own version of Van Halen, you know, with a guitar god and right. copying your hair, or the way you dress, even your stage presence. <laughs> I'm not a record company exec. I don't know how they think. <laughs> In fact, didn't your own record label try to try to get a, a band that sounded like Van Halen too? Oh, I'm sure they did. 
Yeah. Well, you've had three different singers yeah. in Van Halen. Does it change the way you write music to work with these different singers? Uh, I think it's a natural progression. I don't think it's... It, it definitely wasn't difficult for us because it starts with the music all the time anyway. So if anything, it was more of them having to adapt to us than us adapting to them. Well, you know, th there's always a certain amount of friction in a band. If you have four members and they all like the identical thing, you're going to have no uh, vers versatility, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, I, I listened to more progressive music when, when I did. Uh, Alex liked straight ahead rock and roll. Uh, Dave was into disco. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. no, for real, you know? And, and, and together, you know, it made a soup, you know? And uh, what came out of it, you know, it didn't really affect the music, you know, but uh, harmony-wise, song structure, things like that, you know? There, there were a lot of elements of a lot of things that we all grew up on. Well, what it kind of amounted to, I think, for a lot of us in this room, is that Van Halen really was the soundtrack for an entire generation. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Two thumbs up. Well, I mean, it's, a, it's an honor, you know? I mean, uh, very few bands are as, have, are as lucky as we have to still have an audience, you know, after what, pushing 40 years. Rock and roll in recent years has kind of taken a backseat to pop, to hip hop. Do you think it can make a comeback? I think it has gone away, come back, gone away, come back so many times. Uh, I, I would bet uh, anything that it's it's coming back. Do you think? I mean, don't forget we get we got signed in the middle of punk and disco. They laughed at us. You know, what are these guys doing? Playing rock and roll? It's get down tonight, man. KC and the Sunshine Band. You know, which you used to play, right? When well, you were doing yeah, covers. Well, yeah. It sounded like, but it sounded like Black Sabbath when we did it. <laughs> See the future shining bright. Look at those on the 